pre-season uh, start any easier as a premiership coach? Oh, it's no different really. We've been back for a couple of weeks, so um, no, it was important to get the guys back today and see how they're looking. Uh, it's only been eight or nine weeks since the since the grand final, but uh, really pleased with the early results of it. Uh, time trials and skin files and that sort of stuff. So I think across the board in the competition, everyone understands what the off season is now. It's not really much of a um, mental and physical break. For, for a couple of weeks, you don't do too much, but then you get back into it. So they're back into it. Are you happy with the way everyone's reported back in? Yeah, I mean, every year you, you walk away from the testing and you have a look at who's improved. And every year you see improvement. I think we had 10 or 11 P, PBs with the time trials and Got a few guys in the rehab still at the moment, but um, yeah, brings me happy. Andrew Gaff, I, I believe, has come back in great nick and might have won, even won the time trial. No, he didn't win. Uh, not that it's all about winning the time trial, but he, uh, yeah, he wins the time trial in top two or three, but he also gets a fair bit of the footy as well, which um, that's why he's so good. So he, he finished his usual yeah, right up there. Who was, who was in the top two or three? I think uh, Josh Smith might have taken out today, so yeah, good first impression. What does he bring to the group? Um, some, some good outside run. Yeah, he mature, mature age player for us. You know, hopefully have impact at senior level. But if he doesn't um, help out with our younger guys as well, at, uh, waffle eagles. I don't know what we're calling the boys, but uh, yeah. So a dual purpose. But we we think there's some good AFL footy in him. What sort of coaching challenge is it coming back after? I mean, you haven't done it before, but you've played in a few, and you've probably spoken to Pags and all that. Is it a new sort of challenge or is it a different perspective when you come back after you've won a play? Uh, I think uh, every pre-season there's a new challenge. So um, quite often you don't finish happy at the end of the season. So dealing with the satisfaction of a premiership, it's, just, it's real. So how do we deal with that? Uh, how do we learn from, from other clubs and lots of past players around the club have gone through success and how they've dealt with it. So we've done a bit of work on that. But our players are pretty mature. A lot of guys are married with children and a bit more mature with how they handle things so yeah I'm, I'm not going to jump at shadows and we'll just we'll see how we go. Do you think it helps having guys like Brad Shepard, Andrew Gaff and again who sat out the actual grand final do you think it helps having them in to help with the drive? Uh, I don't think you're going to hear too much of that from me about who didn't play and who did and motivations um, it changes every year from, from experience you just you get on with it you can worry about the process and then the results will take care of itself and unfortunately you're going to hear that a little bit because yeah Every year there's guys who miss out on on the big one. So um, unfortunately those guys missed out, but you know there's still a lot of footy ahead of them. <laughs> is it all about hunger? Is that maintaining that hunger for the guys that have realised their dreams? Uh, no, it's... Look, there's hunger every year for every player. So it, at the moment it's about process. And just, you know, getting that right. How do you approach the next couple of weeks? Obviously the, the late finish means a, a later start and it's a, a cute period before Christmas and then back in. How do you approach it? Well, that's different. Yeah, that's we, we've got the boys today, and then they break up on the fourteenth. So, is that thirteen days? No less. So we um, we've got a little camp down in um, Dunsborough. So looking forward to that next week, and then uh, we get a bit more time with the players in January, February. So today and the next couple of weeks, just get back into it, get some fitness, assess the boys. Uh, work on some skills and then after Christmas we ramp it up. Do you load, load it pretty heavily for the next week or so ahead of that camp and another couple of weeks on? Um, the camp's just somewhere different to train, so it won't be a, it's not a gruelling camp or anything like that. But the, uh, no, the process will be the same as last year, it's just they've got to do a lot of work on their own. Um, we got them for a week less before Christmas, so I'll just do it on their own. Do you have a focus on either more fitness than normal or more skill work than normal because of that concertina? Um, no, no, I think we'll just do the normal outlook in terms of our measurements and when we introduce things at the same time frame, it's just a, a lot of it's got to be done on their own so in terms of uh, in that last week before Christmas, so they're going to run probably 30, 40k that week, so we just can't supervise them, so they'll have to do it on their own and um, what will become really important for every club is what happens in that three week period, you come back in January and you just you can't afford to have anyone who's not up to it. So that, that's the challenge and that's where I'm assuming the mature lists will be able to handle it a little bit better than the younger lists because there's so much responsibility on the kids now uh, away from the club. 
Who have you got in rehab and when do you expect them back in full training? Got a few in rehab, uh, nothing too drastic, uh, through a few little niggles or things guys are coming back from. Um, I would have thought, ask me in January, early January we'll, we'll hopefully have almost everyone available to train. So. But there's some guys who are coming in and out now. I think you know, people like Josh Kennedy and Barras and Maston and these guys got little things they're recovering from from the break, but nothing too significant. Didn't see Yo out there today. Yeah, Yo's another one. Yeah, he's had some toe operation. So um, once again, I think early January he'll be he'll be back. So these these things take a bit of time, and yeah, January February is really important. Do you get a chance to um, address the AFL executive over the offseason? The commission? Yeah. No, not yet. No, I'll do that in the new year. I think every premiership coach gets to talk to the commission, so that's probably season's launch around that time. Yeah. Do you know what you're going to talk Got about? Got before? No. <laughs> there are some reports you're going to talk about the um, the AFL becoming too Victorian. So. Yeah, that was Caroline Wilson. She, she just made that up. So, yeah, because I hadn't been asked to talk in that uh, particular function, and she might have got wind of things, but... I spoke to her about it, and um, no, I hadn't thought of anything at the at that stage. But oh, look, I think it's important to address some of the things that are happening in Western Australia and make sure we fly the flag for for WA. So we'll do that, but it won't be the first time they've heard some things. Yeah, nothing specific you can sort of. No, no. And regarding Liam Ryan, there was a report that he walked out or left a training camp early. Um, are you able to clarify? Yeah, um, we have a camp every year that's separate to our program, which one year's in C Cambodia, and they uh, um, do a lot of uh, charity work, and another, another camp's at Stirling Ranges where it's um, a bit more physical. So we've been doing that for uh, 10 years, year on, year off. So this year it was um, uh, the Stirling Ranges turn, and it's not there to break them anymore. It used to be a, can we break down some of these new players? We're a bit smarter than that these days, so if people are struggling, we don't take it any further and Liam struggled. It was a physical camp. Um, he's pretty fit, he ran well today and uh, you know, he, but he didn't handle it too well to the back end so we, we pulled him out and, and we took him home. So nothing um, too sinister from what I heard reported as well. Uh, a, a bit different than, than what actually happened. So he was driven back to Perth and just started training back with the group? Yeah, trained the next day. Yeah, so and I was fine with that. I, like I said, we're not it's not 1985, we're not here to, to break these guys. It's, it was to test them physically and he didn't get through it. So um, that's okay. That's not, I'm not too stressed about that. Is there, do you move, as time goes on and you become more aware of sort of how to get the best out of people, do you move more and further away from the one size fits all sort of? Oh yeah, we're there now. Yeah, and that's the reason why we adapt these things for, for those reasons, because every player is different. and. The army camps at the moment for us anyway, we don't see um, the benefit. There's definite benefit there to physically challenge younger players, take them to levels that they haven't been uh, to before. But it's not not to break them. Whereas I think back in the day, it was no matter what you know you're, you're doing this. So just trying to respect that, and respect the players, and make sure we don't break them down. The, the pre-season's so short now, we can't afford to have three or four injuries from a, a hike. So um, yeah, we read the cues on that, but. That's just the way that went. Do you make extra allowances for a person like Liam as well, who comes from a you know, different background, didn't come through the traditional talent yeah. pathway like a lot of um, your kids did? Yeah, it's interesting how you treat your players. I mean, you can't treat them all the same. You know, you can't you can't treat them evenly, but um, you can treat them fairly. So that's that's my approach, and I'll treat every player a little bit differently, um, but hopefully it's fairly. Thank you. Yeah, when you saw it was 36 today, what did you think? Did you think <coughs> it's on screen. I already had something cut out of my head the other day. So, yeah, it's um, good, good, good hot weather. So we enjoy it. And the boys uh, enjoyed it with the run? And that, uh, yeah, well, the time trial, we were really pleased with it, considering, you know, we hadn't seen them for since, obviously, the grand final. We can't shy away from the fact that they had a good time after it. So, um, important week, this one. Probably more important than than years gone by, so I'm really pleased so far. You must have been happy with how they managed it, the players. Uh, it's probably the best starting the clubs <laughs> ever had. I mean, was that, did you tell them about that or was that a maturity thing? Or? I think there's just been really good growth with our, with our whole club and our players have been leading from the front. Our leaders have this sense of composure about how they deal with things and a very, very humble group. Um, but they've had success as well. I mean, I think in the last four years we've won as many games and many finals as anyone, but um, 
yeah, they've handled it pretty well. But uh, the test now is in front of us. How long, <coughs> how long was that satisfaction last after a grand final premiership win? <laughs> how, how, how quickly do you turn your mind to winning the next one? Uh, it depends who you are. If you're the coaches and the... And the for me, oh, look, there's always the satisfaction of the success we had this year. Uh, but I don't want to wait till round two or three before we start to realise there's another season on. So, uh, look, we're pretty pragmatic, really, the, the coaching group. We've got on with it. We've had a training camp, uh, planning camp already for our coaches, what we do every year. Nothing's really changed. The club's been working really hard on it trying to deal with the success, which is great. But uh, we've, we've well and truly moved on with our planning and preparation. But that's not to say we're never going to talk about what happened because it was a, a special season and special day for us. But we do need to move on. So, you know, Brad Shepard looked to be moving pretty freely out there. Is he joining in main training and did he complete this morning as well? Yeah, he ran this morning. He ran pretty well. Um, Gaffey ran well and Nick's, Nick's going really well. So we're um, really pleased with his progression. And, yeah, he's, um, he's not too far away from on the track running around so yeah those three guys are, are tracking pretty well what does what his what is, what is sort of regime look like at the moment for Nick oh sorry are you asking the wrong bloke yeah. I just well I like to see him on the ground <laughs> so it's uh I haven't delved into that yet so um he's only been back a day so we'll we'll work through that but the reports are that he's in a pretty good space would you say he's ahead of schedule seeing him out there without yeah, I think it's been hard to d determine our schedule so yeah, I don't want to jump the gun, but I feel like he's slightly in front. He's definitely in front of last, the last knee that he did. Are you happy with the rock stocks you brought in with Lysa going out um, heading into the season? Yeah, it's a, it's a fine line uh, last year because we did play two ruckmen for the most part of the year and we, we didn't have much behind those two um, with Nick going down. so And Scott leaving, so we had to bolster the stocks. So we did. So we drafted uh, you know, the young players as well um, who... We think it's going to add to that as well with uh, Bailey Williams. So the four of them now have got some competitive elements to, to training, which is great. Uh, just quickly, athletes always talk about remembering the losses more than the wins. It's still pretty fresh, the grand final win, but does that 2015 still stick out? <laughs> well, it does now you brought it up. <laughs> um, no, look, no, the boys are hopefully that it's, they're professionals, you know, and every year there's going to be memories. So we just got to deal with them and, and look forward. We, we know we're going to get a bit more attention. There's going to be more expectation. And as long as we stick to the process and put ourselves in a really good position to start the year well, then we'll take it as it comes.